Good afternoon, good morning. This is Mark Johnson from Loyalty 360. Hope everyone's happy, safe, and well. I want to welcome you back to another edition of our Leaders in Customer Loyalty series. In this series, we speak with leading brands about what they're seeing on the front lines of customer channel and brand loyalty. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Kate Young. She is the Senior Director of Loyalty and Customer Insights at Chico's. How are you today, Kate? Wonderful. So happy to be here. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with us today. It's been a while since uh, we last spoke, so uh, looking forward to catching up. Yes. No, I, in, in this small industry of loyalty lovers, uh, we, uh, we've we crossed paths several times, so it's nice to be back with you here from my post at Chico's. Absolutely. Uh, first off, we like to start these on a more personal level, get to know the individual we're speaking with uh, a little more depth. So first off, uh, a little bit more about yourself. It'd be great to have uh, your history, kind of uh, your right. position at Chico's and maybe a fun fact about yourself. You have. I'd love that. Favorite. I'd love that. My fun, um, my fun fact um, is that um, I am I'm a, I'm an artist on the side. So I paint on the side for my, you know, my, my expressions. But my um, history is that I am a woman who believes in loyalty loyalty first. Um, Data-driven insights is the way to get to that crack, that secret code for how to get the value um, that you need from your customer while also offering them meaningful value as well. So you can win both ways. I believe that's 100% true. Okay. Uh, what about your history, uh, kind of your education, position? Sure. So, okay, no, for sure. so um, I have been in marketing for, gosh, almost 30 years. Um, I started my career in um, a few agencies, then went, spent the bulk of my career where I say I learned a lot was at Tim Hortons. So I was Tim Hortons for about 15 years, um, both in the U.S. and in Canada. Um, and then from there, um, I was really learned, cut my teeth on data as being the secret to a successful marketing campaign as the one who knows the customer better wins. And that's I learned at Tim Hortons. And then from there, I took that to Express. Um, and so at Express is when I entered my first uh, specialty retail um, role and really saw that they were trying to set up, they were trying to move from being a product driven company to a customer driven company. Um, so it was a meaningful transformation that your know, products always most important, but in terms of selling that product is finding the right customer who's going to be interested. So they stood up how to, how to build that um, from the ground up. And I was part of that effort uh, leading the loyalty practice. And um, they had a loyalty program that was a bit of a sleeper and that it had high, high and high uh, membership but they had a lot of threat hurdles to get access to benefits. So what I learned there is that increasing access to benefits, you know, pays off. Don't have any, you know, false walls around your program. Make sure that people can be a member and get access to benefits quickly. Because if you, before, if you haven't ever accessed a benefit, you're not really a member. So that was what I learned at Express. And then I left um, just about a year and a half ago because I had this amazing opportunity to work with Chico's. Chico's is a brand that has long been known for its fantastic customer loyalty. And it's really one that has been, I think, earned, hard earned over the last 40 years. Um, and it was one of the first loyalty programs in specialty retail anywhere, which was the Chico's Passport Program, which was launched in 1990. It was the first of its kind. And um, then because the, we enjoyed such great loyalty in our Chico's brand, we did not have the courage to change um, for many, many years. There was many, many a leader thought about changing it. And it wasn't until this last, you know, this last year and a half that we really got into the customer file, understood the customer research, not just qualitative of what does value mean to our customer, but also quantitative. What are the best what are the best behaviors of high value customers and how do you learn, you know, see them more quickly in your data as opposed to just the file? So we took those two sets of information, married them to build a whole new suite of benefits for our customer at Chico's, but we didn't stop there. We also innovated at the two other brands in our sisterhood of brands, um, the second one being Soma. And that, of course, is an intimate apparel brand. It's experienced great growth in recent years. And then White House Black Market, which is a brand that's really having a renaissance right now, um, as we're seeing women go back to work in you know, strong numbers, um, and they're really looking to, for products like our tailored choices that we have at White House. Okay, uh, great. So I think you uh, uh, talked about the next uh, area we like to focus on, the company, the, the brands. Um, uh, maybe a little bit about the history. Uh, you mentioned uh, the White House Black Market, Soma. 
Uh, I'm a big fan of White House Black Market. It's my wife's favorite brand, so I spend oh, I love it. I love way, it. Too, way too much there. But uh, well, that's, love her and you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd never heard of it before uh, three or four years ago, and that's uh, that's uh, all I shop at. But it makes it easy for me. Uh, um, so yeah, we'd love love to know a little bit more about the company, just kind of the history, the background. Sure. You mentioned the program from 1990s. Obviously, one of the leaders there. Uh, you know, who, who, uh, what what customers does uh, Chico serve, and how do they serve them? So the Chico's brand is you know, the, the first brand. Um, it was founded by a husband and wife team, and it was really designed of a boutique experience. So how do they bring unique, distinct products that can serve across many lifestyles? And it appealed to a woman who was often overlooked, which is the women 40 plus. So back in 1980, when it was launched, it was a real one of a kind. Um, and it really considered itself to have this artisan um, originality that we have held to um, we've held as a core principle of what Chico's is. So that's a Chico's brand. And then for the White House Black Market brand, it definitely appeals to a woman um, 30s, 40s, 50s. She is very much the boss. She is um, in charge no matter where she shows up. And she likes to look a little bit better than everybody else. Um, she appreciates quality. She appreciates service. Um, so we provide a very high level of service across all three of our brands. And I would say that I've never worked in a company with the kind of professional sales associates that we have here because they truly care about the customer. And I think that is, you know, the product's amazing, but it's those associates that make such the difference across both White House Black Market and Chico's, helping the woman find her true um, confidence through um, self-expression and um, really, and it, it just be, it makes, it's a fun job to be in. We are in the job of making people feel good, um, no matter your size, no matter your shape, no matter your age. So that's what our two apparel brands are all about. And it's been, it's been so much fun to work with, work with these women. Um, and then our Soma brand. Soma is a brand that's a bit of a unicorn. Um, during the pandemic, we really experienced explosive growth, which was very, unfamiliar um, to the specialty retailers of that during that period because we just had the right product at the right time. And through our online channel, we started to appeal to women of all ages. So Soma was initially born um, to provide a service for women who were um, often overlooked by the industry, especially Victoria's Secret. So that woman who's a little bit older, um, she might have to be, you know, she, she just had a different set of needs. And we really are a product driven company. So we had product innovation was at the core of how can we really provide solutions for women. But then during the pandemic, we just exploded um, when younger women found us. So now we really do serve um, a woman, her mother and her grandmother at Soma. And we're trying to wrestle that down because that's a, that's a, that's a challenge from a marketing point of view. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's interesting. I, uh, at least with my daughters and my wife, they seem to share all the same clothes. So uh, maybe not as much of the wife, but they, they, they do the couple of the, the, the jackets are the nice zip up the leather jackets they like. So uh but yeah, so I'm not sure if they want to wear my grandmother's clothes. So that's a challenge. But uh, it depends what kind of style you have. It depends what kind of grandma's style you have. But um, but no, for sure. But that's I mean that's 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 something that I just find that we're really able to make these women feel beautiful and confident from undergarments and foundations to um, every occasion um, across our you know, across our three brands. Okay, great. When you look at customer loyalty, we always, uh, you know, like to understand how brands define customer loyalty, what it means in, to them uh, from a qualitative perspective. So, you know, for you and for uh, Chico's, what does customer loyalty mean to, to you and the organization? Customer loyalty means everything for us. And that has been a foundation of the brand and it's part of DNA. And um, we are customer led. So we listen to the customers, we read all of our verbatims and we pay attention. But for me, walking into this company, it was a very scary proposition to remap these loyalty programs across three brands that had incredible loyalty to start with. So really where I started was I looked at what value, what does value mean to her? Um, and made sure that we understood, you know, what is a compelling value proposition? What does she want? And what we learned across all the brands, but in particular our apparel brands, is that she wanted to be appreciated by the brand. She wanted to be recognized as important to the brand. She wanted her style choices and her points of view to be considered by the brand so she could actually be a part of it. And so those two things were really foundational for us as we set out to then also build a compelling cost value benefit in terms of payback on um, her spend. 
And the other thing we did is we really took the, demo, we had a, the very democratic program before where you know $1 equaled one thing for everybody. And now we've adjusted that so that it is no longer, um, we're able to really look at the potential of each customer and give her personalized experience based on what we're seeing she wants and what we think she's capable of, um, of offering um, to us in terms of shared wallet. Okay, excellent. So you talked about the uh, kind of the customer loyalty programs. You, uh, and, and you, you made some changes to them recently, revamped them. We talked about that a little bit. Can you talk to that a little bit more? You know, uh, why you made the changes to them, how, what you're looking to do with the program, and, and uh, from a kind of uh, kind of all all kind of integrated perspective. I would love to. So um so again, as I said, it was a little bit um intimidating to walk into a company that had these great loyalty programs and had. One of the oldest programs from 1980 um, was, or 1990, forgive me, is when um, Chico's Passport launched. These programs were designed to have 5% off every day, which is a compelling offer. Um, and it's not an inexpensive proposition for the brand. Um, so that's where the two um, apparel brands were. And so what we did is we looked and said, well, gosh, you know, we're not able to create enough uh, special reasons to shop. She just has this 5% off every day. That was um, that really limited um, some of the tools that we could use to create this personalized experience. Part one. Um, part two is that we had a real challenge um, in terms of distinguishing between one customer to another. So a woman who spends $25,000 a year would come in with her girlfriend who spent $200 three years ago, and they would get the same discount, the same 5% off every day because it was a lifetime benefit. So we realized that that wasn't appropriate. We need to really just you know, have some stratification um, and recognition of different of certain customers being you know, the VIPs that they are. So that's a, that was a new level in our new program. Um, we moved from one tier at Chico's, just you were, you weren't, you're in or you're out kind of thing. It was a $500 um, you know, lifetime spend where you got that tripped it um, to now having four tiers with more increased access to benefits. So that was a big deal for me to make sure that we could give women an incentive and make them feel like they were getting benefits sooner um, on that spend. And then second, to make sure the women who were in the, the high, high spenders, the 2000 plus um, and even you know, 20, 30,000 plus, which we do have, um, we wanted to make sure that we were giving them a unique experience that was differentiated. Um, and it's all about service at that high level, all about service. So we do have a secret tier, um, which I haven't really talked about publicly before, but it, we're looking at about the top 100 customers about in our, in our brands. Um, and we are giving them something special quarterly. They have an assigned person who, who helps to be their stylist, brings in certain choices for them. If they're petites, so we make sure the petites are available in their store, things like that. Just an extra level of service because that's, we know why she chooses to spend so much with us because she does have lots of choices. And I think it's really our service that takes us over the edge. Okay, great. When you look at uh, kind of evolution of customers, they changed, uh, they were changing before COVID. COVID uh, brought a whole, brought a whole kind of list of uh, changes, buying online, picking up in store, buying online, picking up curbside. You know, how do you think your customers have evolved, you know, before COVID, during COVID? You, you talked about the amazing success and growth you saw during COVID. You know, what did you see coming, going through COVID? And do you think those uh, changes will continue going forward? Do you think they will evolve a little bit as well? Oh, I think COVID's changed all of us. The pandemic has changed everything. It's been a once in a lifetime, I hope, um, you know, transformation for how we live, how we work, how we shop, um, everything, how we spend money, how we prioritize our spend. So I think what we've learned about the, through the pandemic is that the stakes are higher for every experience with the customer because it's a privilege to have her come into our stores and to have it a one-on-one -on -one experience. And when she's doing that, she's looking for a service. She's looking for entertainment. She's looking to feel better. And so that's what we're really doubling down on is that in-store experience to make sure that we're truly delivering um, in a way that's memorable and meaningful because that has been, for me now, it's just more precious than ever. Um, that she's actually taking the time to go and go to a store to get in her car and go as opposed to just the online browsing that she we know she also does okay great and, and the last question i have uh for today uh, more, more a little more self-serving what can loyalty 360 do to help you and your team and their customer loyalty journey 
gosh. Um, I think the most important thing that you can do as an industry provider and as a loyalty, the loyalty um, center of truth that you are is help us provide more benchmarks. So what does good look like? I have um, worked across the other retailers and certainly have made a lot of friends through your conference and others who can help me set expectations of what does good look like. Um, but what I found, what was good in my previous company and the one before that is different than what it is here. And so we've had to really been a little bit creative exercise to set those benchmarks um, and help us understand that we're on track. Um, but if you know you could help us um, by better providing that kind of data, um, I would love it. Um, another thing I'm also thinking about from a data point of view is having a better share of closet, share of wallets, you know, studies happening. We have to commission those you know, the way we want them kind of on our own. We rely on NPD and other sources, but that would be another huge help because when you're, you know, competing now, you know, you have to understand like, who are you actually competing with? Um, are you competing with Nordstrom and Saks? Or are you competing with, you know, Kohl's and Target? It's a, it's tricky to figure out. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, well, a very good insight there as well. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. It was uh, uh, interesting to hear, hear the kind of transformation, but also I think one thing that stood out is the passion you have for the brand, uh, the customer loyalty, and uh, you know just the customer in general, just, uh, just the oh, emphasis and, and, and the passion you have was great to hear. These women, these women are the ones I know and love. So I'm and, and personally and professionally, I'm thrilled to be here to help bring a little more joy to the world. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today and looking forward to hearing more from you and Chico's going forward. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> See you. Thank, thank you everyone for listening. Make sure you join us again for another edition of uh, our Leaders and Customer Loyalty Series. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.